In this video, we discuss the six secrets to living well in retirement. Coming up next on Holy Schmidt. Holy Schmidt! Before we begin, let me give a shout out to a subscriber who made a comment a couple of videos back. The video was called The Three Most Important Money Skills Needed in Retirement. Now, normally I follow a production schedule unless there's something happening in the world and I need to get a video out pretty quickly to address what's happening. But this subscriber's comment directly related to this video, so I've moved this one up in the distribution schedule. So a special shout out to subscriber Plain E. Grace, who made the comment on that video that the most important or one of the most important money skills is organization. It also happens to be a great secret, so to speak, to living well in retirement. I'll put a link to that video at the end of this video. The three money skills video is one of my more popular videos, so hopefully you'll enjoy it too. And by way of information, this video was originally titled The Five Secrets to Living Well in Retirement, but that sixth point was so important, I added it to the end. So stick around so that you can see that one as well. So thank you, Plain E. Grace, for your comment. It makes a nice addition to this video. By the way, if anyone has an interest in a particular topic, just put it in the comment section below. I do read the comments, and if it's something that I film a video around or add to a video, I'll mention you as well. All right, let's get into it. Secret number one is prioritizing how you spend your money. Let's start off by something I call the S curve. That stands for Schmidt curve. It was a back of the envelope discussion I had with someone a few years ago, explaining to them how they should conceptualize deployment of their very scarce capital. As the story goes, we were discussing what the person was going to be doing with their upcoming retirement. And they talked about all the trips that we're going to take and all of the things that they were going to do, all of the gifts that they were going to buy for folks that they had neglected over the years. And at the same time discussed the concept or the difficulty of paying for Medicare. So I said to them, you need to understand the S curve. Let me explain. On the board, you'll see five areas to spend your money in retirement with the far left and the far right being almost non-controversial. One could argue the middle a bit, but I think if you follow the logic here, you'll probably agree with me as well. The very first thing that you spend your money on in retirement is your health and your safety. This is fundamental to actually getting to a ripe old age in retirement. And more importantly, staying healthy and staying safe allows you to pursue other elements of retirement that frankly you wouldn't be able to pursue. The second element is comfort. Once you've spent the money to secure your health and safety, being comfortable in retirement is very, very important. The third point is enjoyment. This is where you spend your money after you've secured your health, after you've secured your safety and your comfort. And you'll notice that the capital outlay doesn't change a lot when you move from left to right. That's because a lot of the things we're going to talk about in just a moment are basically free or near free, and therefore you don't need to spend money on those items but this is where things get fuzzy with people. They confuse enjoyment with adventure or the rock and roller lifestyle as I call it. Adventure is flying to different parts of the world all of the time and spending money on gifts and entertainment and people and places and things. And then rock and roller is really just the image you have of what retirement should look like when you are retired when you're in your 20s and 30s. And that's driving along in your convertible down South Miami Beach, throwing money out at people and pointing at them as you adjust your sunglasses because the sun is in your eyes. So if you understand how this curve works and generally agree with what I'm saying, the rest of this video will make a lot of sense to you. But you would be shocked at how many people put rock and roll, adventure and enjoyment in positions one, two and three instead of three, four and five. All right, now that we've laid the foundation with the S curve, let's get into the next items on the retiring well list. Point two is the quality of your relationships. Up until retirement, many of us have been rushing through life to start a career, to start a family, to build a career, to get the kids out of the house and into college or into a trade school or into their own lives. And finally, when you have the opportunity to take a breath, all of a sudden you look up and you're approaching retirement. You notice that you don't have a lot of friends, you haven't spent the time that you should have with your children, your spouse, and really you're looking at your life going forward 
without the background or without the skills that you would have developed in a different life, building one-on-one -on -one relationships with key people in your life. In the next part of your life, relationships are the single most important element to achieving enjoyment and adventure when you retire. And let's be clear, most people have friends and family that they care about and they care about them. So we're not talking about being a nomad, but what we are talking about is fortifying your relationships for the future. Enhancing your relationships is low cost and frankly, they need you as much as you need them, generally speaking. So you'll find a lot of people willing to build those relationships because just like you, they have been through the rush of growing their careers and their families, and now it's their time to settle down and enjoy their retirement as well. One word of advice, find people that you have common ground with and that you enjoy being around because frankly, you're going to be around them for a long time. Secret number three is the one thing. You've heard me mention this many times in many contexts on different videos. This is actually where it fits in. The one thing is key to enjoying your retirement, like relationships. The one thing is that one thing you're going to do in retirement that is your passion for the future. I read and replied to a comment today on one of my other videos where I again mentioned the one thing, and the commenter said that they loved the idea of the one thing, but they just didn't know how to get started. My comment to them and to you is the one thing probably isn't something that's really popular. Could be, of course, but generally speaking, if it's popular, you would already be doing it. It might even be something that's a little quirky or off the beaten path, something that you might have been too cool to do when you were younger, but you really wanted to do it. Now is the time. Or it could have been something that you wanted to do, but it just took so much time and took you away from your responsibilities. Think golf in this situation. Golf is a, for me anyway, it's a wonderful sport, but it is a big, big commitment. Or it could be something that's been calling out to you since you were a child model building, coin collecting. The good thing about the one thing is that if it doesn't work out, there's always another one thing that you can try next. So don't spend weeks, months, or even years trying to figure out the one thing because that's valuable time and you can discover it other ways, trying and doing. Number four, stay engaged with the world when you retire. It's very easy to become a hermit when you retire. In fact, many a retiree has romanticized about riding off into the sunset, cowboy style, and disappearing from their life today and the people in that life, frankly. But the problem with disappearing into the sunset is that the next day the sun rises again. And if you haven't planned what you're going to do and how you're going to stay connected with the world, it's going to be a very boring and lonely life ahead. So stay connected, read, take a class at the local college, join a biking club, something. And importantly, do something that challenges your mind and keeps you around people. Secret number five is having reasonable funding going into retirement. Retirement takes money, but there's a reason that I have this close to last. The fact is most people have one view of what it costs to live in retirement, when in reality they could do it for much, much less. Going back to the S curve for a moment, unless you need to be a rock and roller, the funds that you have will probably work if you plan accordingly. By the way, spending and happiness in retirement aren't necessarily correlated, particularly at the rock and roller level. Visions of throwing the $100 bills out of the convertible may seem very exciting, but believe me when I tell you, the minute you toss one out, you'll stop and you'll dive for it. I know I would. Marginal utility means that the more you spend, the less you enjoy each additional dollar spent. Let me explain. If a year ago you decided you needed a new purse or a new wallet, and you went out and spent $100 for a new wallet or $200 for a new purse. A year goes by and the item is worn out and you need it to replace it. Well, you could replace it with something similar or you could go out and you could get extravagant. The word extravagant is relative because for me, extravagant is five or $10 more, but for some people, a $200 purse is not a purse at all. You need a $2,000 purse. The same could be said for the wallet as well. A Louis Vuitton wallet is not $100. It's several hundred dollars at least. The point is the person who now owns the $2,000 purse, are they 10 times happier than when they own the $200 purse? I doubt it. They may say that they're happier. They may even say that there's no comparison between the $2,000 purse and the $200 purse, but in the cold light of day, when they're sitting there by themselves, 
they're not going to be 10 times happier. I would be shocked if they were. And secret number six, the last point is to stay ruthlessly organized. In retirement, you will be afforded the time to be extremely organized. So run with that. There are so many benefits to this that I can't list them all, but you will achieve the best price. If your goal is to optimize costs, you will avoid penalties on your credit card because you're not late. You will get the best vacations because you plan them six months, nine months, 12 months in advance. Being ruthlessly organized has terrific benefits. It will also help you avoid heartache. How many times have you booked a hotel, look great online, you didn't do any research whatsoever, only to get there and the picture is from 20 years ago. You were too busy because you had to book the room before you left for the office and so you didn't give it another thought. Then the day of, you phoned the car rental company and the only car they had was four times as expensive as the one you could have rented two weeks earlier, but you had to go with it. So you did. You get to the hotel and it's not great. The kids were disappointed, your spouse was disappointed, and you told yourself never again. And then you did it again. Why? It's not because you were a disorganized person, it's because you didn't have the time. Now you do. The other benefit, and this can't be overstated, is the clarity of mind that you have when you are ruthlessly organized. That clarity eluded us when we were building careers and raising families. Our closets weren't as neat as they could be. Clothes might have been in there from 20 or 30 years ago in some cases. And as you dug through the piles and piles of stuff that were in there, eventually you would find what you needed. But in retirement, you can take a day or two days, throw everything out that you're not using, and really only keep the items in there that you actually use. Do that for your drawers, your desk, the piles of mail in your kitchen, and you are off to the races in terms of getting organized. Getting organized means completely decluttering. You'll know what you own, what you need, and most importantly, you will be at peace with everything around you because you know exactly where everything's at and exactly what you need to do. But it does take time. At the beginning of this video, I mentioned the three most important money skills needed in retirement. So check out this video right here. This is that video. Also, if you have not subscribed to the channel and you'd like to see more of me, please consider clicking subscribe and turning on notifications so that you get alerted the next time I post a video. I post two to three times a week. This is Jeff Schmidt. Thanks for watching.